Hello everyone and welcome to Quality Old Games. Today we are making Western Roman Empire unit roster tier list uh, from the Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion expansion. And we are going to start with cavalry. And as the first unit we have Equites Sagittarii, the, uh, the only missile cavalry unit that the Western Roman Empire has. Uh, unfortunately, this cavalry unit is not as good as mercenary missile cavalries, which you can recruit quite easily, especially from the eastern part of the empire, and they are actually quite expensive to maintain. So, even though missile cavalries are overall very good units, I would say Equites Sagittari is rather a bad unit because you can get better mercenaries and actually those mercenaries are cheaper than these units. So that's why they get a bad tier. And you need to have at least tier 2 or 3 staples in order to recruit them. Then we have the Roman Light Cavalry, Voiderat Cavalry. Um, their morale is quite poor. You can recruit them quite easily and they are not that expensive but their utility in battle is quite limited. You cannot charge a solid enemy and expect these guys to prevail. Uh, you can use them to hunt down light missile units but if the missile unit has decent enough melee capability it may be actually uh, be able to route these, uh, this light cavalry. So because of that, I think it's also pretty bad unit. <clears throat> then we go to the other end, basically. So we have the General's Bodyguard. They are superior in the original game, and I think they have gotten even better in this expansion. So they are most definitely superior tier. And the reason for that is that they are very hard to kill, they are very robust, uh, they have high morale, their charges are very uh, effective, and um, most, of the, uh, most of the bodyguards you get for free when you get new family members, but in addition you can actually train these bodyguards to act as general for your armies, even though they won't then be family members. So, in any way, they are one of the best units in the game, and most definitely the best cavalry unit that Western Roman Empire has in its roster. But uh, the Sarmatian Auxilia is not shadowed much by the General's Bodyguard. So they are heavy cavalry, they are fast cavalry, you can train them pretty easily, it only takes one turn. They have good morale, which is especially important for Western Roman Empire units, since most of the units don't have good morale. And their charges can be devastating as well. And one of the reasons why Fodorati uh, cavalry got uh, bad tier is that, because these guys are fast, uh, they can act as light cavalry, pursuing enemy units, but also as heavy cavalry uh, using shock impact to route enemy lines, especially if you can charge from the side or from the rear. So most definitely at least good tier, maybe not maybe not S tier, somewhere between good and S. I will place them in strong good. And then we have Skulai Palatina and uh, they take two turns to build, they require higher tier stables than Sarmatian Auxilia, but their stats are actually weaker than the Sarmatian Auxilias, and they are not fast moving contra to Sarmatian Auxilia. So basically you get worse troops that are expensive, take more time to train, and so on, so I don't see any use why anyone would like to use these troops, so that puts them into trust here. So 
you uh, in this setting of course it's the campaign setting in multiplayer the things might be different but especially in campaign setting i i don't see any use for school i palatina then we have the auxilia palatinae and these guys are the best spear infantry that the western roman empire has and um, they are quite solid they too have uh, good morale you need quite high tier barracks to build them and they are not much cheaper than comitatensis and they don't have those throwing spear or pili that the comitatensis have but they have the shield wall uh, special ability which increases their usefulness but they cannot be used as um, offensive infantry they are mostly meant for defensive purposes so uh, because of that they are not good tier units but i think they are decent nonetheless strong decent i would say and let's see what we have next we have comitatensis and uh, this is the basic comitatensis cohort and uh, actually you need to have only tier 3 barracks to build them so that's pretty nice um, they are pretty much like legionaries in the original Rome, Rome total war and they are solid infantry uh, their downside is that they don't have good morale not bad but not good either so because of that you cannot rely on them uh, in the battle not to break too easily and because of that they get only decent tier then we have comitatensis first cohort and these are one of the best infantry in the games in the game so the unit size is 50% uh, larger than the basic unit size so and these units pack a bit more punch than the uh, regular comitatensis and then they have good morale and the eagle increases morale of the units nearby so i think they are S tier unit then again if you have watched my playthrough of the campaign why don't i make more use of this comitatensis first cohort well uh, I don't usually like units that take two turns to train, at least in Rome Total War. And they are also quite expensive and, um, and uh, pretty expensive to maintain. And they require the highest tier barracks to build. Those are basically the reasons. Of course, um, if you consider the drawbacks to the utility of this unit, I think I should utilize this more i i think they deserve their place in s tier even though i haven't used them too much and then we have the forderati infantry uh, they are spear infantry pretty much early game spear infantry and they are not that good they won't hold the line pretty well in a battle and um, if they start to route, usually other units start to route as well. They are not nearly as solid as uh, Auxilia Palatina or Comitatensis. And because of that, I think they get a place in bad tier. In early game or in some defensive battles, you don't have much opportunities to get other troops. But uh, I, I think you should avoid these if that's possible. Then we have, so those were the Forderati infantry, by the way. And then we have Limitane. And uh, it's nice that these guys have the Pila or throwing spears as well as the Comitatensis. But um, their morale and their fighting capabilities in melee are actually even worse than those of the Forderati infantry. The positive thing is that you ne only need tier 1 barracks to get these guys but you should not rely 
uh, on these except in defensive battles when you can put them in the city center and they cannot rout. So that's basically the only use they have. Maybe in some bridge battles they can be utilized, but uh, if you have any better units available, use those instead. But because these guys require only tier 1 barracks, I think I will put them before the Forderati infantry here. But they are bad units nonetheless. And then we have peasants. I have uh, put in the original Rome Total War tier lists, uh, unit roster tier lists, these guys always to the S tier, and I think this, these units are your best friends in barbarian invasion as you are playing with Western Rome. And that's because you are struggling so much with the public order. There is, there is always some city with low public order, on the brink of rebellion or on the brink of uh, having civil disorder and so on, on the verge of causing troubles for you. And the easiest way to respond to that is the peasants. They are cheap if you want to use buildings. Of course, they are better, but uh, they you don't have money for them usually. So you need to have quick solutions and peasants are often the answer there. Uh, you cannot rely on them on battles, usually. Maybe in defensive battles they can soak up some missile damage or take uh, the enemy cavalry charge uh, in the city center so they won't break and the cavalry charge cannot reach your archers or better fighting units. But otherwise in battle I don't think that peasants are any use at all. But because of the, uh, their ability to boost the public order, fast. I think they are one of the best units, if not the best unit, in Western Roman Empire roster. Then we have Lumbatari. Uh, they are pretty much the same units as Comitatensis. Uh, their upkeep is the same. They have a bit higher missile attack and they are a bit more expensive and require one tier higher barracks to build. But what makes them quite a bit better than original Comitatensis is that they have good morale and they have uh, quite a few of those missiles that they throw at the enemies. As Comitatensis have only two, these guys have maybe, I don't know, five to ten. And thus they kind of combine... Um, the javelin throwing units and heavy infantry from Rome, uh, the original Rome Total War. And uh, these guys actually make quite solid infantry. And for example, in bridge battles, they are extremely efficient as they are able to throw the darts before the enemy is trying to cross the, or before the enemy gets across the bridge. So, because of that, they most definitely deserve a place in good tier. Uh, most of my armies, usually, if, uh, if I can build them uh, in all the time I need and so on, will have the core units, uh, are the blue battery here. And then we have the Praventores, and um, I think they require tier 3 barracks to build. They are small unit, only half the strength of a regular unit. They are kind of, um, let's say, assassin squad or something like that in the battlefield, or supposed to be. Uh, they are quite cheap to make, but um, compared to their size, their maintenance or upkeep cost is comparatively high, and um, I don't see that much use of their stealth abilities in the battlefield. So at least when I'm playing, I won't use these. I will use the Comitatensis instead, because uh, of the higher number of men, and they can actually chop their way through most of the enemies. So they are not as bad as the Skulai Palatinae, but I, I don't think you should build these guys, if you have option to build Comitatensis or Plumbatari. And then we have 
the Catholic priests and um, their units, my, uh, unit size is very small and uh, they are not fighters, they take two turns to build and you need to have high enough uh, church building or hermitage so you can build them. Um, what makes them useful is that their chanting increases morale. And especially in early game, your troops are suffering from lack of morale. So, with the help of these guys, you can make your line of Limitane, Forderati Infantry or Comitatensis hold out somewhat longer. But I think basically you should try to get Comitatensis first cohort for that. Or something like that. Uh, I think in some cases these guys are useful, but uh, I haven't trained too many of them. I think they are in bad tier, but not as bad as Limitane or Forderati Infantry. Of course, you only need one unit in one army of these, and of course that takes place from the actual fighting units, but if your front can hold somewhat longer, I think in some cases that might be justified. And it seems we are moving to archer unit and first we have the basic archers. They are cheap, they don't do that much damage, they have medical range, but usually you can get quite a lot of them. And because they are cheap, uh, you can afford to get them. Actually, they are one of the cheapest units in Roman roster and require only tier 1 archery range to build. And uh, at least in my armies, they are the most commonly used archery units or missile units. And especially in bridge battles, if they can fire at the enemy from their unguarded side, from the opposite side from where the enemy has its shield, I think these guys can do some damage and they are also pretty decent to take down enemy missile cavalry. And I think because of that I will give them a decent tier and actually above Comitatensis. And I think I will put them actually above Auxilia Palatinae. Because uh, at least I use them so much in the campaign. Uh, usually with high enough number of these, you can take down enemy missile units in uh, missile unit battle, and then you will have missile superiority when the infantry battle starts. Then we have another Western Roman Empire missile units, Bukelari, crossbowmen. They have the nice ability of armor piercing. So... They are quite useful, for example, against enemy warlords or enemy heavy infantry and so on. But they have several drawbacks. The first one is that their range is smaller than that of the archers. And that's a minus, because um, then you need to move closer, to, for example, to the enemy missile cavalry in order to engage them. And they will get at least one or two free shots on these guys before these can get their first shot off. And the second problem is that you cannot keep these guys behind your lines because they cannot fire over your units. So they need to have clear line of sight to the enemy. And that means that you need to use them on your army's flanks. And that of course makes them vulnerable to enemy cavalry charge. Of course, you can protect them by having skirmish mode on and some uh, spearmen behind them, but I don't like these guys too much. Of course, the armor priesting ability is nice, but um, they are more expensive than the archers, and I, I don't find their utility to be too much. And because of that, I will place them in bad tier as well. I guess they can go somewhere around here. 
And then we have missile units, starting with ballistas. And I'm not big fan of siege weapons in Rome Total War. Of, of course they have some uses in some battles, but usually I don't think they are that useful. And um, uh, I would take almost always an archer unit over a ballista unit. And ballistas require higher tier archery building to build. And they are slow on the campaign map and in the battlefield as well. And um, of course they have long range missiles that are very useful for example against enemy Klibinario, Cataphracts and so on. But their rate of fire is so slow that usually they don't get enough kills to justify them. And because of that I think I will put them in the trash tier. And then we have carriage ballistas. Uh, the added mobility is nice for these guys, but I think basically they suffer from the same problems than the actual ballistas. But the problems are not that great because these guys move faster. So I think I will give them a bit higher place in bat tier. But I, I don't remember building these guys. So I will once again take archers over these. Then we have heavy on archers, and these require tier 5 archery building. And um, they might be useful in some siege battles, but they slow down the army, they are expensive, they, are, they require that tier 5 archery building to make. And uh, because of that I don't like them. So I'm only wondering, are they trash or bad units? I think they are trash because uh, I think they actually take two turns to complete or build actually. So they are not that good units. And of course we have the basic onitures here and these are better. They require tier uh, the second highest archery building to build and that makes them somewhat more useful. They take one turn to construct so I think usually I would take these guys or make these guys over the heavy onitures. Of course heavy onitures in the battle are more useful than these but since I don't like the archery unit or the missile sorry I don't like the siege units um, I think um, these guys are bad nonetheless. Then we have repeating ballistas. They suffer from the same thing than the original ballistas, but they take even uh, two turns to build. They require higher tier uh, archery building to make, and if I remember correctly, they cannot even knock down the wooden palisades or enemy gates from afar. So they have the same problems as the Ballista and uh, they have actually none of the benefits. Of course uh, they have a bit higher rate of fire but I don't think that's enough to offset the uh, disabilities of this unit. So they are trustier once again. And that's the last unit, we have Scorpions. And I think these guys suffer from the same issues as the Ballistas. And of course these guys cannot knock down the wooden walls or the gates. Actually one of my viewers have com has commented that it's, it in some cases would be possible to knock down the gates with Scorpions. But at least in my testing, I haven't been able to do that. So because of that, they get a place in trash tier as well. So let's make a quick check if some changes are needed. I don't think so. So this is my view 
of the unit roster of Western Roman Empire in campaign setting of Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion. What do you think? Please tell your uh, opinion in the comment field. You may disagree or agree with me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of the day. Quality old games out.